Okay, so now I'm going to read you the historical facts. The early pioneers of Hayfork Valley frequently used a natural bridge as a picnic site. This borne out by the names and dates engraved in the limestone rock. In 1852, a well-known citizen of Weaverville, J.R. Anderson, was killed and a small herd of his cattle were driven off by a band of Winnetou Indians. A few hours later, Trinity Sheriff William H. Dixon and a number of men went, went in pursuit. After several days of tracking through the rugged mountains, Dixon's party set up a camp on Hayfork Creek while scouts were sent out to locate the Indians. Late that afternoon, a scout reported sighting an Indian rancheria a few miles from Dixon's camp. From a vantage point on Natural Bridge, the scouts could see smoke from their campfires a, so a short distance upstream and even described children playing. Under cover of darkness, the party quickly made their way up the narrow draw known as Bridge Gulch and surrounded the encampment. When the morning sun broke through the trees, the camp began to stir as men, women, and children of the tribe gathered to hear their leader speak a shot rang out and he dropped to the ground. Chaos broke out as Sheriff Dixon's men began firing at everyone. They could line up in their gun sights. Soon, however, the shooting ended as Dixon's men ran out of targets. When all was quiet, the party cautiously made their way down the mountainside and into the Winnetou camp where smoke from burning teepees curled toward the sky and the smell of gunpowder hung in the air. All that remained of the 150 Winnetous were three children. Accounts vary. This is where Donna told me she heard that Indian Gracie had one baby that she had saved and took care of for days before she finally came out of the woods after living off the land of guests the best she could. The band that had killed Mr. Anderson and driven off his cattle were not among those who had died in the camp. Simply amazing. They made a mistake. If they had stolen a small herd of cattle, wouldn't they have been around that camp somewhere? That should have told them something. That's the logical thing. You go and you talk to these people. But that's not what happened. Hell, they must have been Democrats. So, this place was like a hundred yard wide natural dam. And in one of the photos with the smaller opening is looking at it through the back side. The boulder in the front, if you look at that last picture, Samantha is down inside the front opening to give you an idea how big that front opening is. And so I got a text from Donna, who was there talking with Indian Gracie at the bar and Indian Gracie gave her some of the history from her point of view since the story I have was she was the only survivor and she was a baby. I don't know now what to believe but she was Jim Kerrigan's grandma. So Donna said she told me that they are all took their babies and ran to that place. They went to the stronghold 
and she watched all of her family and all of her kinfolk massacred and her and one child were the only survivors. She spent weeks there before she finally came out. She was eating off the land and taking care of the baby. Donna says, I'm not sure who the baby was. It may have been Indian Joe. She said it was so bloody and so nasty that she felt like she was in hell. I replied, Jim Kerrigan, I don't know if you remember him, he said his grandmother was the only survivor and that's all he mentions about it on a video on YouTube. That was the other reason I wanted to see if my story and yours jive with hers. The, maybe, the baby may have been his mother. In other words, Indian Gracie might have been Jim Kerrigan's, well, not mother, but her daughter's son. She had two daughters and a son, Shirley, Sharon, and Indian Dave. Donna goes on, I think so. She seemed terrified when she was telling me the story. She was one hard woman. And that's about what Donna remembers. And I'm looking through the text, and that's basically all I have. And anyway, such a horrible thing what people do to people. They didn't have no evidence that they had killed this rancher in Weaverville. We do know that they stole one small steer to eat because they were starving and it was winter or early spring. They got dealt a dirty hand by the people that took over that county at the time. And um, it's a sad thing, like I said, what people do to people. Anyway, I was lucky enough to meet them, the son, and uh, the son I mentioned in my story, and uh, it just uh, blows my mind. Indian Gracie never minded being called Indian Gracie, that's what she went by. She used to call me Motorcycle Mike, because at the time I had a motorcycle up there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the pictures, because it is a beautiful spot, and uh, that's all I have to say about that. So, you know what to do, thanks, and I'm going to post a couple more of my chapters of my book, and I have uh, some of the history also in that book of Hayfork and Weaverville. Thanks. Here at the end, I have put three photos. One of the hotel finished. The second black and white actually has orbs in it too, but there's Indian Dave and Indian Gracie in 82 on a postcard walking toward the restaurant. And then the last photo of the hotel is me painting it. So this was part of my story and um, I figured I'd put this in as a separate video. Of course, I cover the ghost in the picture on the second floor above me, and it's in a magnified view also, but it's in one of the chapters. So there you have it. Thanks for listening and watching. Very interesting place, very interesting town. Trinity County, God's country. Bigfoot country and known for gold. I loved it there and I will always consider it my home.